okay, we're back to this model or a model similar to one we've looked at before. Again, in this model, we can see the slab of the ocean floor, which is dark gray, the slab of continental crust, which is light gray. We've got the grass growing on top of the continental crust, and we've got ocean water on top of the oceanic crust, and we've got the arrows indicating the direction that we've got a convergent boundary. We've got the convection currents on the bottom that are pushing the plates together, right? So we've got magma that is getting cooler and more dense, so it's falling and pulling these crusts together. And the boundary is going to be right in between these two arrows here, um, which is a little different. Um, and this is sim very similar to what we saw in the J Japan uh, situation. Um, the way to think about this is, you know, if we're looking at a map in the traditional way, you would see Japan generally on your left um, and the Pacific Ocean on your right, um, because we would look, think about it coming from the south, sort of, or with the north at the top. This case, we're sort of reversed and spun around, so you can imagine it being that you're sitting in the north, and the this part over here is the south, and so you're looking south towards the horizon, um, with Japan being the, the, the uh, sorry, Asia being the land over here on the side, um, and so that would be the the way we would think about this. But in general, what matters here is not the perspective we're looking at, but really what happens or how this works. So we're going to pick a long time frame of about 20 million years, and we're going to watch what happens as we run this. We should expect to see along the boundary, we expect to see earthquakes like normal. I mean, at all plate boundaries, we're going to see earthquakes. Um, we're going to see uh, one plate, the plate over here, go underneath the other one, subduct under another piece of oceanic crust. So it's a little different than what we talked about um, in the example with the Andes Mountains, um, because the plate is going is not going out, not going underneath directly at the edge of the continent. It's going under a piece of oceanic crust uh, instead of going under a piece of continental crust, which is why we end up with this um, arc of mountains. So let's run this and see how this goes. So we're seeing our earthquakes in the middle here. We're seeing one plate being subducted under another, and we can see here we've got that magma forming up, and all of a sudden we're seeing we're seeing magma rising to the surface and starting to form islands, a row of islands. Um, and as this happens over time, some of these islands are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and some of them are going to stay relatively small. But again, we have all these volcanic islands forming along the side. I'm going to pause this. Oh, it's done at this point. I'll just keep talking. So again, what we have here is we have this one plate subducting under another. We've got a little bit of folding going on here because the, of the collision, which makes sense. Um, but not too much. And then you've got these island, these islands that have formed out here with volcanoes on them. Um, and the reason is, again, is that the melting of this crust as it's sliding underneath along this line, along this trench that would be forming out here, um, the magma and the seafloor sediments and all that stuff as it's getting undergoing friction and it's going into the, the mantle, it's starting to melt and form these magma chambers in the crust. And eventually some of it leaks up to the surface forming volcanoes. So this set of islands would represent Japan um uh the islands of japan this would represent asia over here so like mainland asia like for example uh, korea and china and russia sitting on sort of on this side uh, and then this would be the pacific ocean and this would be the pacific plate i'm going to run through this one more time just so you can watch it happen again in 20 million years we're going to run this we're going to watch the formation of those volcanic islands off the coast of the continent where one oceanic plate goes under another we call that process where one plate goes under another subduction, subduction, um, and this type of subduction is a little, little different than the one that formed the Andes, but very, very, very similar in most ways. One thing that's interesting to note that in Japan and other places where you have these island arcs, um, occasionally new islands form, new volcanic islands will pop out of the ocean periodically, you know, out of sort of out of nowhere. You'll, the scientists will, or fishermen or someone riding by a boat will see steam coming out of the ocean or smoke coming out of the ocean. And all of a sudden, over the course of a number of days or weeks or months, uh, a new island will be, will be born. And that is just another volcano that's reaching out of the surface of the water um, and generally form the exact same way as all the other islands, just smaller and newer. But um, this can happen. 